Well, it's great to have your company again this morning, or whatever time you happen to be tuning in to our Side by Side. It's great just to have your company, and I hope you're finding some help as we travel through Romans together. Today we're going to be thinking a little bit about a verse in Romans 5. But let me read the first five verses of this chapter for us. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This section of Romans has long been associated with the Reformed tradition because it contains that very, very important truth that we are justified by faith. In other words, we are put right with God, not by our works, not by what we do, but by what Jesus has done and are resting in that. That's sometimes a little bit counterintuitive for us as human beings to to try to figure out because we feel, number one, that we ought to do something and number two, that we would really like to do something for our own pride, finds it very hard to accept all of this. But that's the way grace is. It's a gift of God. How marvellous, how wonderful, how generous this is. But I don't want to stay there just this morning. What I want to do is to move on to this verse that says, verse 3, Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Not only that. Yes, there's something else that is affected by our faith in Christ. Our trusting in Jesus changes the way that we see everything in life. And in particular, it changes the way that we see our sufferings. Notice here that it says, Not only that, we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that. Yes, knowing that, but do we really know that? That's the question. Do we really know this truth? Let me quote you a little bit from a book by Johnny Erickson Tada. She is, if you don't know Johnny Erickson Tada, she had a diving accident which left her quadriplegic and now she has had over 50 years, I think, of that experience in a wheelchair. And this is what she says. I'm just quoting her own story at one point. It was a beautiful Sunday morning and services were over. I was wheeling across the church parking lot towards my van when this handsome young man, who introduced himself as David, stopped me. Are you Johnny? I am, I smiled. Oh, great. I'm a visitor here and I was hoping we'd run into, I'd run into you today because I've been really praying for you. Well, my eyes got wide. Really? What about Oh, you're healing. I've been praying for you to get out of your wheelchair. Well, at that point, my spirit hesitated. David was a visitor. He came to church hoping to see me and wanted to see me healed. I can't tell you how many people I've met over the years who've done the same thing. In churches, on street corners, in convention centres and in busy shopping malls. Some of those encounters have been a little overwhelming, almost frightening but not on this day with this young man. Still, I had to fight off an eerie feeling. You see, several times years ago, a group of men showed up at our farmhouse store in Maryland, all having been led there by the Holy Spirit to either heal me or marry me. So perhaps you can understand my reticence. Well, I said, I never refuse a prayer for healing, David. And he got down to business in no time, launching into what sounded like a prepared speech. He said, Have you ever considered that it might be sin standing in the way of your healing, that you've disobeyed in some way? And before I could answer, David opened his Bible, turned to look, the passage about the paralytic let down through the the roof, and how Jesus not only healed him but forgave his sin. He closed his Bible, reminding me that the paralysed man in the story was healed, and I could too if I only would confess my sins and have faith. Well, I told him, my conscience was clean before God. And I interrupt here by saying, a little bit like us 
embracing the truth of Romans 5, 1, that we have been justified by faith and Christ cleanses us from all sin. Anyway, but I said, I welcome your prayers. And, well, David just really was struggling at that point. According to what he had been taught, if I was a Christian and if there was no sin in my life and if I had faith that God would heal, then I would be. Johnny, you must lack faith. I mean, look at you, you're still in your wheelchair. I thought for a moment about the biblical account he had just read and I asked him to open up his Bible again to this passage. And then I said, OK, you're right about one thing, David. Oh yes, you're right about the paralysed man coming through the roof and Jesus healing him. But it says, when Jesus saw the faith of those friends, he was made well. You see, David, it's your faith, not my faith, in this case. Well, you can understand uh, David was a little bit put off by that. But it does show us how people's coping with suffering is. Naturally, we want to get rid of suffering. We want to see our friends, our family and others come to a place where they experience God's grace and God's healing. And yet, this passage says, we know that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. You see, when we come to faith in Christ, we see everything differently. We see the world around us in its glories and its beauties, but we also see something about the pains and the sorrows. We understand we understand why they are here. They are part of the fall. And we are touched and affected by the fall as everything is the whole of creation. We understand that one day there is going to be ultimate healing where there will be no more sorrow, tears, pain. And that day is not far away, no matter how young you are. A life is not that long, even though it seem long. But eternity is forever. But notice here, this says, suffering produces endurance. Now, there's a story, I think, isn't there, in the endurance, the word endurance. Because endurance is not something that happens for a day or a week. In the case of Johnny, it's been happening for decades. And she's now living with a different type of struggle, with the pain and different, all sorts of different things that have, have developed over the years. And she has some terribly, terribly difficult days. She uses the illustration of Notre Dame when it used to be so dark and you could hardly tell the distinction of one brick or another, the great cathedral in Paris. But she said they put up the scaffolding and they started to sandblast it and they brought it back to this beautiful, lovely white, the, the colour of the, the stones and all the distinctions could now be seen. And she said, that's exactly what's going on in my life, she said. God is doing a work of blasting away at so many parts of my nature. And then it says, suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character. This process that's going on and then character produces hope. And all the time, because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in our hearts helps us to understand and to embrace this process and come to places where we can actually say, Lord, thank you that I'm in this place. I will live with this and I will accept this as you use it to bring about this change in me. My faith affects my suffering. It leads to a place of hope. We need that. And you know, God may well heal your pain. He may send someone to help you in your pain or to remove your pain or to change it but he may not. But he is involved in doing something as you and I endure by his grace. Maybe this helps us not only to pray for ourselves, but maybe it also helps us to pray for others so that we're not just praying that God will heal them. By all means, we should. But that we would also pray that in this waiting time, if it be that he's not going to heal until eternity, that God will do the sort of work he's been doing in Johnny's life produce that endurable, that ability to endure, and not just to endure grinding it out, but to endure with joy, and then see the production of character and hope. Because hope is everything, isn't it really? If you don't have hope, even though you have no pain, your life is miserable. You need to have hope.
So let's pray that for each other. And I want to pray for you, Lord God, for everyone listening today. Would you give us the grace to know that this, whatever we're going through, is part of your plan? Would it please you to heal us and help us? And would it also please you, dear Father, to help us endure and embrace your will? And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I trust the Lord will continue to put his arms around you today and teach you about his love, even in your hard place.